Hello everybody and welcome to the real session one of Grains of Truth, which is our Witcher tabletop RPG game campaign, whatever it is you want to call it. We are late today, unfortunately, because we were distracted doing Naruto hand signs. So without further ado, uh, we will quickly do our round of plugs and announcements and such before we get into the game. So I uh, let you guys go first. If you have anything you would like to announce or say before we get going. Well, uh, for my own sort of portion of it, I have no particular uh, plugs in uh, uh, in mind at the minute. Uh, I've got my hair on fire, unfortunately. But I thank you so much for uh, attending and for listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I do believe, however, that we have an unfamiliar face, at least within this campaign. And so I'll just go ahead and throw it over to, well, our lovely Jamie. How you doing, man? I'm okay. I'm a... <laughs> it's a new system. Yeah. <laughs> I know it very well. Oh, top Indeed. to bottom, inside yeah, out, yeah. back to I mean, I've, I've made five characters in the space of we've been live. I'm just like, Phew, it's great. <laughs> it's yeah, going to yeah. take some getting used to. Um, but yeah, no, I don't actually have anything to announce yet, but I might do later. That's like a pre-announcement announcement. Ooh. It's not going to be as epic as the hype might, you know, like the... Ooh, what's going to happen? It's not going to be as epic as that. But hey, I'll have something finally, maybe. Let ex yeah. You just got to tease him, you know? Let Ooh. expectations be engendered, and if they are too high, that's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> we shall not say that you oversold what what you are. Actually, uh, I didn't even plucky. sell it. Yeah. Didn't even sell. No. No. Yeah. But you know these faces. You've seen them before. There's Jason, who is a regular tormentor of me. We got Jamie, who is also a regular tormentor of me. What am I doing here? You know, you, you know these guys. Got, Jamie's always here. Like, he's just yes. like, like a bad smell. We can't get rid of him. He's just here. Precisely. Now. It's not what we can do. Mm -hmm. I've um, seeked into the furniture. Oh. <laughs> Get some Febreze on them. Right, well, as soon as these two don't have anything announced, uh, Thursday is the penultimate episode of The Order, which is the weekly viewer game on Encounter Roleplay, which is twitch.tv forward slash Encounter Roleplay. That's at 10 p.m. GMT, 5 p.m. EST. Uh, and this week we will be doing a knockoff bargain bin Van Helsing, and I'm so excited because that's my favorite movie of all time. So tune in for that because it's going to be real fun. Friday is the finale of Uprising in the Perrinlands, which is on the Greyhawk channel, in which my lovely elven wizard, Asha Bellina, is a vampire now. Yay! So, so uh, that's, that's probably good in the service of, like, Greyhawk's most evil vampire. So that that's it's probably all right. You know, there's nothing wrong to go wrong there. I realize I said the exact same thing yesterday. I'm like, like a broken record. Oh. Anyway, yes, tune in for them. And um, we should be releasing information and mood boards and stuff about our characters for the uh, game on WebDM in January. Cypher System Vampire Game. So uh, tune in for that and keep your eyes on Twitter because that's where all the good stuff will be. Um, Jamie, I think that she asked us to plug things just so she didn't feel that bad about self-promotion. I mean... That was that was like what five things, and you've also got curry on. You also have bike club going on. Yeah, so uh, yeah, also you got so much YouTube channel where you can catch vods of all this stuff, except the encounter roleplay stuff and the Greyhawk stuff because I don't own them. So you should go to their respective YouTubes and go watch me on there. But yeah. the important thing is you should be watching me. Mm. No, oh my god, I'm I'm channeling Isabel already. That's my excuse. <laughs> it's Isabel. It's not me. But Just guys, gonna... don't forget to smash that like button and ding that <laughs> bell. <laughs> if this video can get 10,000 likes, no. Oh, if this uh. video gets 10,000 likes, I'll fly to Texas and punch Jason. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I will stop hogging on this spotlight <laughs> and hand it over to Jason. What was this? I don't know. Look, I don't know. I've been at work. Leave me alone. I, I, I don't blame you. I'm oh. hide in my shame corner and hand it over. Yes. Uh, as a quick aside, as you can probably tell, we are down a player tonight. Unfortunately, uh, Alice, dealing with a little bit of uh, 
uh, health issues, a headache, and, and a few other things that uh, we, w we wish her a speedy recovery and hope to see her back uh, sooner rather than later. As of now, however, we have a new character to introduce. <laughs> Pause that. And... Talon. Mm -hmm. The day has gone surprisingly well. Galen is attending to certain matters. Uh, his assistant is helping where he can. Erst has been a new hire, but given his relative professionalism, the improvement of Gallen's business has uh, brought upon you, in particular, a particularly comfortable windfall. A few crowns extra than you had anticipated in your pocket. And what other way to spend it than to simply traipse around Novigrad and enjoy the sights, the sounds, the smells, and the drink. The latter being a particular favorite of yours. You're not soused, particularly, as we come upon your visage in the evening. But you feel a, a certain warmth crawl into your chest and stay there rather comfortably. You have just adjourned from the Passiflora, the lower levels, of course. Not that you wouldn't partake in what is offered upstairs, but tonight is not for companionship, at least of a humankind. Tonight, all you will need is a stiff drink and a hearty reminder of somewhat more lucrative and marvelous days. As you walk along and as you continue this eh, slight bender, I need you to roll a... Hmm, what would this be? This would probably be awareness. Yeah, awareness. It requires dice. It does require what? dice. It requires 1d10 plus your intelligence plus the awareness skill. Whatever you have in the awareness skill. It's just cumulative. Okay. Okay. So there was a three on the dice and I have uh, five awareness. Okay. And your intelligence? Uh, ten. Okay, so adding all those together, that's thirteen plus, what is it, five awareness? Yeah. So an eighteen. Okay. Not too bad. As you walk along, the silver and the steel of your swords grow colder. They kind of rustle against your armor uncomfortably. You roll your shoulder blades, crack your neck, and still yourself for a minute before hearing a slight commotion. The evening crowd, which passes around you, pays little attention, not only to your presence, but to the cries of a young man you see being accosted into a nearby alleyway by a somewhat thuggish lot. You see the fists begin to fly into the gullet of this poor man, and hear shouted interrogations commence. The specifics of the words aren't readily apparent, and to your slightly inebriated state, the number of thugs that you'd be facing is 
uh, estimatable at best, but what do you wish to do? Um, are they in eye line, or am I just hearing this sort of around a corner, knowing that I'll be coming up upon this? Um, you see the alleyway ahead of you. The man has just been dragged into the, um, excuse me, dragged into the alleyway itself, and you do sort of see around the corner a couple of people just planting their fists into the stomach of this man repeatedly. Again, all the while shouting and, and sort of like roughing him up, but mm. none too kindly. Yeah, I'd like to sort of uh, head towards that direction and just sort of make my presence known, but not as uh, like I'm trying to get their attention, just make it so that if any of them are looking around, like they'll catch me because I'm just heading straight towards the group. Sure, sure. So, as you sort of angle yourself to this trajectory as you approach the lookout of this merry band of thugs, a wiry-haired gentleman of even more wiry body stands guard. His compatriots are holding the man against the wall uh, and have sort of s decreased the volume as they notice your presence and as the wiry man sort of whistles back to them. They whisper to their captive with a more menacing manner and tone. The thin man does not address you, but keeps a, a very wide eye trained on you. I'd just like to keep walking as though I'm, as though I don't even acknowledge that they're there. Like if they get in my way, then they're in my way. Like, right. I'm not moving for them. And I'm just sure. going to walk straight into the group. The, as you attempt to walk forward into the group, the, the wiry man kind of steps in front of you and says, Fuck you looking at, stranger. How tall is this person? He's equitable height to you. Um, he, again, his form is rather lithe and spider-like, but his... Um, his confidence, at least, in this circumstance is uh, exuding. I just sort of give him uh, like a almost a, a look as to say like, oh, sorry, I didn't even notice you were there. And just sort of sidestep and keep going. Okay, down the alleyway that uh, the group is sort of centered behind. Mm-hmm. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. This would probably provoke a roll. Uh, aha. Let's see how you do. Oh, sorry about that. Well, you're a moron. Uh, <laughs> as you sort of sidestep, the the wiry man kind of backsteps and, and, and kind of like places his hand on your chest and kind of pushes you back. No, not down this way. Way is closed. I just look him dead in the eyes for a good, like, few seconds. Make and then, him... while okay. eyes locked, start stepping forwards. Make an intimidation check. Again, 1d10, empathy with uh, intimidation. Or no, not empathy. It's body, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Will. Will. Excuse well, me. it was a 10 on the dice. Oh, that's... I shot myself then thinking, oh, it's a zero. Wait, no, it's a d10. <laughs> <laughs> Zeros don't exist on dice. Overall, the zero. Oh, God. So that was uh, intimidation. So that's uh, 14. And then what was the other skill? Body. Uh, no, Will. Will. Uh, that's going to be... Ooh, so that's 24. Whew. Um, as you sort of walk forward, this, this, uh, uh that's, the, yeah, this would be another roll for this. Oh, that's not good. Um, uh, this man kind of finally sort of recognizing 
what you are, especially given the two sword hilts that sort of jut from your person, he kind of stumbles back into one of his friends, uh, a more stocky fellow um, who enters into the picture. With a well-kept beard and a somewhat nasal voice, the, ma- the tone of this man is a little bit more conversational. <laughs> and nervous, given <laughs> your presence. <laughs> Master Witcher! <laughs> How are you this evening? <laughs> He gulps audibly. Well, I was on a nice evening walk, and then all of a sudden, a rat decides which way I should go. <laughs> Barna, uh, <laughs> the, the the man looks down to his compatriot, who's now stumbled onto the ground and kind of like splayed back. And they both look at each other, and, and the stockier man who's standing before you says, oh, Barnabas didn't mean any harm by it. He's just a little excitable. That's that's it. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> he, he starts digging around in what you assume to be a coin purse and produces uh, counting very feverishly almost. He hands you uh, 25 crowns for the inconvenience, <laughs> of course. The coins are sort of jittering in his hand. Uh, hmm. I'll take them. He he's perfectly fine with with this, and and sort of kicks at Barnabas to sort of crawl along the ground and up the wall. You know, sort of standing despite his sort of frame and, and kind of allows you to pass on if you so desire. Mm, I'll start walking towards where the guy was being beaten up. I don't know how far off that was from where we were, but I'll start making my way towards them. It's actually, uh, from the way it's the entryway, the where Barnabas was standing, and then about like five feet down that alleyway, there, there they were, so as you sort of approach the the other two thugs that are still pinning this rather bruised individual. Like, they, they weren't, um, excuse me. They weren't kind in their work and were quite thorough, as you see uh, a small cut above the eye uh, that dribbles blood, a few notches within his face, and you're kind of hesitant to even look at whatever they've done to the body, because it's probably not been pretty. So what's all this then? Hmm? Uh, the the shorter man kind of enters into your field of vision and, and kind of waves his hand. Uh, j- just a slight, <laughs> just a slight disagreement, Master Witcher. Nothing that concerns your work. I, I promise you that. Are you going to kill him? <laughs> Uh, well, because you're going Caleb, the long way around. If you are, if Caleb if you were going to do it, if you were going to do it, do it quickly. Stop wasting time. If you're just going to rough him up, what's the point? Hmm? Well, That's a lot of wasted effort on your part. <laughs> Each At of the end the of thugs, the day, what's this going to yeah. achieve? Each of the thugs kind of bites their tongue in in kind of a fear and being a little bit more of a conversationalist the the shorter man kind of intones well obviously if we wanted to kill him we would of course but we are more interested in uh, w- w- what he knows w- what he might know so long as he plays nice nothing further needs to happen isn't that right Caleb Ca- the uh individual known as Caleb um, who's sort of pressed against the wall is looking down at this point trying to avert his gaze from yours just absolutely (laughs) not much of a talk as you can see (laughs) so Caleb was the bruised and beaten up one yes the one that they accosted hmm I'd like to sort of um, grab him by the face and make him look at me. Caleb? Mm-hmm. He, 
he kind of tries to wriggle out of your grasp. That would probably be, uh, let's go with, uh, opposed, opposed physique check. Why not? Your, your, you make a physique check, which is body and physique, and I'll make a dodge escape roll. Okay. Uh, 15 from me. Okay. He's a little slippery, and um, though he tries to kind of arrest himself from the, the the grasp of the two thugs, he's unsuccessful, and as your hands kind of clasp around his uh, lower jaw and lift, he's just sort of n not not even wanting to meet your gaze. He's just letting his eyes wander everywhere but your face. You know, the eyes tell a lot about a person. <laughs> let him go. Uh, uh, I said let him go. I'm I said sure. let him go. You hear a soft growl kind of escape the shorter man before he kind of relents and... Uh, the two thugs at uh, Caleb's side let him go. Sort of hold their hands up to show they are being compliant and join Barnabas behind this, uh, this ringleader of sorts. <laughs> Caleb at that point kind of softens a bit and you catch his eyes meeting yours for but a moment before again he kind of turns his attentions elsewhere. Do you know what they want to know? <laughs> I'll know if you're lying. Mm -hmm. Caleb says nothing. He keeps quiet. Though still handily in your grasp. Hmm. Jog on. Go on. <laughs> I'll let him go. Yeah. He was a little shorter than you, so having your grasp kind of elevate him and then suddenly release, he, he kind of stumbles back into the wall. <laughs> Looks to uh, the ringleader and his gaggle of thugs nods to you, finally actually meeting your, your gaze and then scurrying away. Master Witcher, <laughs> I thought your lot was supposed to be neutral. <laughs> you saying I showed favoritism? <laughs> no, never would imply that, of course, of course. Well, then here's a the thing. The neutrality. I'll let you go as well. Uh, <laughs> He's kind of speechless at the moment that you say this. But he narrows his eyes and kind of searches you. He steps back, however, and... All right, Lance. <laughs> let's, let's leave the Witcher alone to his devices, eh? <laughs> Have a nice night. <laughs> of course, and to you too, Master Witcher. They go down the same road that Caleb went down. And it, as soon it, as they got a head start. Yeah, and as soon as they assume you're they're out of earshot with you. 
you hear the quickening of their footsteps. All while you hear the cursing of this nasally man chastising the underlings that he has to deal with. A couple within the crowd, um, walking along in the night, they sort of spot you, turn their heads quite to the side, but quickly saunter on. I'll just keep on with my walk. All right. I gave the guy a fighting chance. Indeed. And you're sure that he appreciated it. Depends how quick he is. You're sure with more time that he would have thanked you, probably. Mm. Ah, but alas. Making your way through the muddied streets of Novigrad, you come across your final destination. Ah. The Golden Sturgeon. It's a somewhat humble establishment, close enough to the docks of Novigrad to be boisterous at night, yet good enough to actually be warm. You enter in, feel the warmth of the hearth radiate through the place, and settle in for a, a nice round or two, or three. You lose track after a while. But as the night wears on and turns to day, we find a letter being delivered to a certain knight errant staying at the nowhere with his lover and companion. Who sounds amazingly much better than last time we saw them, I have to say. Absolutely. Just, just abs absolutely uh, healed from whatever uh, strange travel sickness. <laughs> Come on. <coughs> now, I did not, in the previous session, elaborate upon what exactly was contained within that <laughs> that letter? He did not. No. no, I did not. So I guess I'll just have to rectify that, won't I? By all means, go ahead. All right. Isabel de Leon Co. As one of impeccable taste myself, I weep for your current state. Staying with your knight errant in the bits. Quite far afield from whatever fairy tales you might have stumbled upon in Gwyson Hall. Do you shudder to think that you're so far from home? Or are you paralyzed by the possibility that at any moment the witch hunters could pop round for a pint and end up with another sorceress for their pyre? Oh, your darling Laurent surely would put up a fight, and you might as well. But as soon as that first spell is slung, Novigrad will turn into quite the inhospitable locale. Mayhaps you need a friend like us. Those who can guarantee your safety, so long as you don't mind pursuing our mutual interests. Because do not be fooled. We have more in common now than you'd like to admit. An associate of mine will collect you at the Golden Sturgeon. Go with them and you will be led to me so that we might discuss further this opportunity. Fail to do so and you'll be on the pyres by dawn tomorrow. Isabel reads this letter and kind of just Have you heard Laurent, did you 
<laughs> have you seen the language in this? Uh, have you seen uh, how whoever this is is addressing me and us? Uh, uh, <laughs> he, he kind of shies away from responding, assuming the question to be rhetorical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... Well, it appears we have no choice. In all fairness, uh, you have no choice. Oh, the gallant knight in shining armor as ever, Laurent. I brought you the wine for a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I'd actually prefer you stay out of this, to be honest. Are you sure about that? Yes. And besides, while I'm out being, no doubt, a horrible, terrible criminal, I need someone to keep my bed warm for me. Another horrible, terrible criminal. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> he sort of laughs despite himself. There's a stillness in the room that pervades as you see kind of the color drain from his cheeks. Uh, I always knew the North was dangerous. That this would not be where we would stay. Is it wrong of me to have wished? that we would not have to live so soon. We'll go home one day. Wherever that may be. He looks to you, searching for some comfort. I'd like you to make a human perception roll. I think I have um, something to add to that. Uh, I do! Oh, I'm so good at it! Okay. Um, why do I do tens? I have like nine million dice. There we go. Uh, that's under empathy. <laughs> Isabel has empathy. <laughs> good joke. You're, you're, you're obligated to have him. Like, you can't not. <laughs> so like, I rolled a nine. My empathy okay. is nine. 18? And my human perception is four, so 23. Okay. No, 22. Ah. Mathematics. Math. Mathematics. All right, at that point, uh, it's probably be this one, because, you know. Okay. And probably have like about a uh, that. Yeah, no, that's not enough. <laughs> it's twenty two. Like, come on. Should we not forget? Like, my first roll was a crit for making myself look hot, though. So you know. Um, yeah, that that also played into it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, as you sort of scan across his form. The last years that you have shared with Laron have been glorious. Uh, they've been happy in comparison to the decades which preceded. And yet, you sort of get the sense that as he pours the wine and as he sort of takes the goblet to you, he's recognizing that there are not blue skies ahead. And there's something more. I'll um I'll take the wine from him and I'll put a hand on his cheek and I say, look, it'll be all right. He sort of leans into your cheek and nods. At that point you sort of see him, especially with a twenty-two. <laughs> The stubble that clings to his cheeks has grown a little bit more ragged than usual. And you get the sense that the roads have not been kind, especially 
due to his, well, back. He assured you that he could make the journey, and he has. At what cost, however, uh, shall be seen. But as he sort of puts a hand to his back, massages it slightly and <clears throat> clears his throat, he lifts the goblet to you ever so smoothly, or at least as smoothly as he can in his current state. Which is to say, like, probably like a seven out of ten. Like, <laughs> it's not him, mm -hmm. but it yeah. still is. He sips at it. That Toussaint notion of savoring wine mm -hmm. still sort of embedded within him. Yeah, like Isabel is like, I'm going to need this to get me through today because there's going to be some fuckery afoot, I can tell. But, but. She's, but she holds it in and she takes a very dignified sip herself. And then uh, uh, she'll put her glass down and say, listen, um, while I'm out joining the criminal underworld, I want you to stay in and rest today. <laughs> I, I, I'm being dead serious. There is work contracts that could be fulfilled. There is nothing that is worth your health. I don't want to come back and hear about you tilting at windmills or gallivanting about the countryside. Sit yourself in bed and don't move. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> Dear. How many windmills are there in the north anyway? I don't know. Probably none. <laughs> he sort of chuckles to himself and... Fine, fine, my petite chauffeur. I will... Uh, I will rest. Good. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Wait, okay, can't she? Where are you? Okay. Persuasion. Oh, I'm even better at persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 10. On the dice? On the dice. So that will be okay, a 24. Thank, th thank you for clarifying. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, if sorry. that was a 10 overall, that would be bad. <laughs> that would be very bad. No, that was a 24. Okay. Um, this is the one thing Isabel's good at. But yes. I, 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 obviously. Um, so as... You sort of intone, uh, compounded with your awareness of his state and and also the fact that you apparently look like a model. <laughs> uh, like, again, cover of Fantasy Vogue, like yep. worthy material. Mm -hmm. uh, Laurent kind of relents and gives you the nod that has sort of manifested itself whenever there's that kind of sense of resistance that he feels. He wouldn't give you this nod if he had like a strong conviction, mm -hmm. but as he does, he kind of falls back into the small chair that's nestled by the window of this uh, in room and lets out a deep sigh. Um, I will, I'll go over and kiss the top of his head and then I will leave. It, 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 <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't smell good. No, nope. but, but you know, it's the gesture. It, it's the, it's gesture. the gesture that counts, and and he seems to appreciate it. Sort of holding onto your hand before you depart. As you depart and descend down the staircase of the nowhere, you enter into a somewhat lively space. A few people kind of talking amidst themselves and, and a few of the day laborers kind of actually getting ready to begin their day. Um, a few of them are huddled within cloaks. A couple of them are kind of just reclined on tables, smoking pipes, much to the dismay of the innkeep, who they kind of disregard. Uh, among, amongst them, pardon, uh, you see a tenant of this uh, establishment. Uh, your neighbor, um, not Emelina, but uh, her compatriot, a bard of some sort, uh, at least from what you've been able to divine, uh, Lorraine, 
you see her kind of fiddling with a uh what is that thing called a lute that's that's what it is uh, just kind of plucking away at the strings semi harmoniously to the point where it doesn't pervade the tavern with like loud music but it does indeed kind of fill the space rather comfortably I'll, I'll smile warmly at her as I uh, as I pass she looks to you and smiles as well nodding very judiciously as you pass along and out into the streets of Novigrad. I will, um, I'm of course wearing my very nice cloak, but I will, uh, I'll pull the hood up as I walk along because I don't want to. Isabel is very aware that right now she's the hottest woman in Novigrad. So uh, <laughs> she's pulling her hood up because she doesn't want to draw too much attention to her very good face. Well, indeed, and as you sort of step out onto the outskirts of Novigrad, where you and Laurent have sort of uh, set up shop, I need you to roll a reflex uh, check. Oh. A reflex check? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's oh, a no? nine. Pl plus? not even dexterity? Oh. Like, you have to have points in dexterity, right? Reflex is just a skill on its own. Like, reflex is just a thing. Oh. Oh, 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 that's reflex right. Reflex is a stat. No, no, no. Reflex plus um, dodge escape, if you have anything in that. That's nope. a no. It's still just a nine. All right. Luckily enough, you were able to pull your cloak, uh, your cloak hood over your face before uh unfortunate puddle of mud was disturbed uh falling effortlessly across the uh wider portion of your cloak it's not filthy but it's definitely dirty and indeed you hear the cart driver hurling curses at you uh in actually what languages do you speak oh boy i speak Let's see. Um, where is it? Sorry, it's a new character sheet. I don't know where anything is. Um, all good. All good. I don't actually know. I assume, like, the Witcher version of, of Common, or whatever right. it is, just the standard sort of talky talk, and then uh, Elder Speech, I think. Okay. Okay, so you would not understand this, as it is Dwarven. Uh, speak yeah, you don't speak Dwarven. Uh, but the driver certainly does, and he, he speaks it very voraciously at you. Uh, I just sort of quietly under my breath swear. <laughs> and, oh no, I speak Nilfgaardian, don't I? Because I'm from fucking Nilfgaard. Uh, Nilfgaardian is technically... A form, it's a dialect of elder speech. Yes. This this game's languages are very weird. <laughs> Thank you for calling attention to it so early in the campaign. <laughs> like, you're the other one that was like, what languages do you speak? And that put me on the spot. So it's your fault, really, if we're, if we're doing this. <laughs> oh, it's... Uh, mm, <laughs> if we're going I, I, there. I will, I will keep that just tucked away in one of my notes here. Regrets. Uh, I have no one. All right. So, continuing on through the bits, just got to pull up the map here. Uh-huh. 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 All right. So, the bits is situated in the eastern side of Novigrad near the Oxenfurt Gate. In order to make your way to the a uh, place that is described, you would have to make your way west. Um, still saying, thankfully, on the same sort of uh, island that the Nowhere is situated on, but in a different district. Mm -hmm. As you pass along the streets, uh, hardened in most places by 
um, the snow and ice, which has sort of clung to the base of the buildings and, and pervaded across the roads. The journey itself is not too terribly uh, arduous. Uh, going down from the nowhere past a little shopkeep uh, and along a few roads, you happen across one of the more opulent buildings on the edge of the bits. It stands by itself and, and kind of towers over you. As you continue along, disregarding it for the most part, you make your way north through Excuse me. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, make your way north for just a little while. Uh, going towards St. Gregory's Bridge, which would lead, if uninterrupted, to the Elector's Square. But turning sharply south, you soon come across... Excuse me. Hierarch Square in in little to no time. That's a bad place. Don't like that. Indeed. Until quite recently, of course, you know this just as common rumor, a great many mages lived near this main square. They fled, of course, when the witch hunters began to exercise their beliefs more actively, leaving many of the most beautiful townhouses of Novigrad abandoned and relatively uncared for. Indeed, the effects of it are apparent as soon as you come through. Windows have been boarded up in winter, and what few shopkeeps there are mainly keep to themselves and kind of solicit passers-by rather than um, excuse me, uh, rather than calling much attention to themselves, especially as you see the crest of Redania kind of march around upon the pauldrons and, and armor of several guards which patrol the streets. Novigrad isn't strictly Redanian. Nobody owns Novigrad. It is the free city, after all. Doesn't mean there aren't facilitators of the law. Especially given that Radovid's Winter War has extended its influence all across the north. As you walk along, is there anything you'd like to keep an eye out for or otherwise attend to? Um, I would probably see if anybody is, uh, like, keeping an eye on me. If anybody is watching where I'm going. And beyond, like, someone checking me out, like, maybe somebody, if they're, like, you know, keeping tabs on me or, sure. maybe, like, looking at me suspiciously, like, you fucking mage. Right. Yeah. As you sort of pass an herbalist's uh, stand whose pitiful offerings are unfortunately much withered due to the weather, uh, I'd like you to make an awareness roll. Okay. That will be a 17. 17, okay. Uh, I'm not hiding. As you sort of walk along, you notice a few uh, individuals not regarding you suspiciously or otherwise, uh, but it seems that one of their number uh, has been <laughs> paying attention and caught a glimpse of your uh, radiant form, mud-stained though your cloak is. And he, he's kind of convincing a, a few of his compatriots to kind of take a look 
and take notice of you. One of them, a uh, rather short man, kind of thumps him on the chest and, and bickers at him judiciously, telling him to kind of keep an eye on things more stringently. You don't hear what it is, but the intent is. I feel like if Isabel spotted that this guy who was trying to be like, yo, check out this chick and nobody was paying attention, she would like pull her hood down a little bit and like give him a really saucy wink and then walk off. Just be like, ah! Oh. Cause she's, as she's you, like... As you nearly crest the um, the corner of Vivaldi's bank, which is on the sort of southwesterly side of the Hierarch Square, as... <laughs> As the, the young man is still sort of captivated, um, you let your hood down for but a moment. Of course, give him the wink. And then I need you to roll just another awareness check, just real quick. Okay. Uh, that's a, oh, that's a 13. Uh, you swear you only see it for a moment before you pass on. <laughs> As you give this wink, the, the, the young the young man is sort of captivated and speechless and he sort of uh, paws at his uh, shorter mentor who looks at him very sternly. And indeed, as he sort of chastises him once more, he turns around. The symbol of the eternal fire blazoned on the back of his coat. The the younger man kind of, the last thing you see is his shoulders kind of drop and he gulps before following along. <laughs> I was yeah. like, but no, no, because that guy was kind of like, oh, she's really hot. And I'm like, ah, I'm a mage, you dick. <laughs> so I won in the end. I can justify that. So I won. Don't don't take this <laughs> away from me. <laughs> I won. I rewrite it as I wish. <laughs> I won. <laughs> God damn it. Fucking, oh, eternal fire sucks so much. I hate them. But after oh. I spot that, I'm like, whoop. <laughs> yeah, you beeline straight down the street to an extent that a couple of people are kind of pushed out of the way and one of them sort of goes, what the fuck? <laughs> Continuing along the road, however, you find yourself soon enough at the Golden Sturgeon. A sort of patio area is is vacant covered in snow and and <laughs> uh, indicative uh, indicative of better business days. <laughs> the sign itself swings kind of gently with the morning breeze. But for all intents and purposes, you've arrived to where you're supposed to. All right, I um, take a deep breath outside and I make my way inside. Opening the door. Uh oh. A rather severe man with closely shorn hair and an aquiline nose stands nearer to the doorway as you enter, opposite an unconscious figure that he is staring daggers at, who is draped over the bar. He hands the young barmaid that stands beside him a hefty coin purse and mutters thanks, before finally turning his attentions to you. Gray eyes stare into yours rather knowingly, almost to an uncomfortable degree. Wordlessly, he stands at his full height, probably about a a good seven to eight inches taller than you, and looks down. 
Apologies for the tone of my correspondence. I knew not how to get your attention otherwise. And who might I have the pleasure of addressing? Asked Mateo. He holds out an, a hand to you. It's fairly, uh, fairly muscular. Like, mm -hmm. you get the sense that this person is one who has endured hardship, and he offers his hand very in a very genteel manner. I shall take the offered hand. It's tight. Not uncomfortably so, but firm. Mm -hmm. And as he lets your hand go, he sort of <laughs> sniffs, trying to fight back a little bit of a sniffle, given the cold weather. <sighs> and I apologize even further for not being able to... Get my associates in line properly. Another was supposed to meet you here. Oh. And he turns to the unconscious form. I suppose you filled that part of the agreement. But there was another. He narrows his eyes to you. You wouldn't know her. It does not matter where she sleeps. Nah. He's, he sort of grits his teeth. I'll just have to trust that Sojin will be smart enough to come to Gallen. Once he sees that no one's bloody here. <sighs> What is this all about? What do you want from me, these others that you're summoning? What is this? I am not the master here. I am simply an orchestrator. Of his will, of course. Whose will? I am merchant. He's sort of... Tisks. He goes by the name... Well... He's popularly known as Gallen the Gallant. At the mention of this name, I'd need you to roll, uh, let's say a, uh, would this be a business check? No, that would not be a business check. Uh, uh, hmm, would definitely be something concerning empathy but I'm not sure what. Not to hell with it, make a business check. <laughs> yeah, I got plus one in business. Business. Um, 17. Wow, I couldn't, Se I didn't know what seven plus nine was there, Jesus. <laughs> Wait, seven plus nine is what? Seven plus nine. Is 16, but plus one. Ah, I see. 17. Okay. That's true. That's true. Gallen Dahlberg. That's the name that comes to mind in relation specifically to Gallen the Gallant. A member of the Dahlberg clan, at least from what you've heard. You spent some time navigating social circles, and his name was mentioned once or twice in sort of an offhand manner. His reputation is not glowering and, and sort of uh, all-powerful, but his business and influence extend to a noticeable degree. And being of a clan, am I to assume he's a Skellige? No. Oh. Being of clan Dalberg, you know that he is a dwarf. Oh, I see. 
The Dalbergs are a clan of Mahakam, not of Skellige. And indeed, as the sort of recognition, recognition, excuse me, sort of sparks in your eye, Erst kind of nods. He's not the most powerful. I'll give him that, but he knows who to hire. At least I thought he did. And he sort of looks again to <laughs> the unconscious form on the bar. And what are we being hired for, precisely? I think he'd probably be better to explain that. As you sort of, um, excuse me, as you sort of observe uh, Erst, he kind of reaches for uh, a sort of s walking stick that rests on his uh, right thigh, and he sort of hands it off. Do you mind? Do I mind what? Hold this for a moment, please. I hold it. Thank you. He pulls a wine skin from behind him and uncorks it. He holds his hand out to accept the walking stick. I give him the stick back, but there's like a sour lemon looking face on Isabel. She does she's not the person that holds things. My most sincere apologies. <sighs> he sighs and sort of labors his way over the walking stick preceding his right leg. There's a slight limp to his step. Where that's born from, you're not entirely sure, but as he looks back to you one final time, he kind of narrows his eyes. I'll tell you one thing. I wasn't lying. We've more in common than you think. Do we now? Wordlessly, he pours the cold contents of the water skin onto this form. Alan. Morning. <laughs> Less eager than that, but yep. As the, <laughs> excuse me. A soft stream down the neck of the battered form of Talon cascades. Isabel, you can assume that this individual, whoever they be, mm -hmm. given the twin swords on his back and the wild cat eyes that open at the shock of this cold water, you can assume them to be a witcher. Let's not forget the Lots of scarring on one half of the face. Indeed. Like a hell of a lot of scarring across one face. It's part of the uniform, really, for a witch. Mm. Yeah. It's just sort of a menagerie of victories kind of mm. embedded in your flesh. That is currently being <laughs> drowned, basically. I'm used to it. I'll sputter awake and just kind of... Airs doesn't stop. And the, the water skin is rather large and, and indeed as he sort of squeezes it out and he kind of keeps a stone cold expression as it falls down your back and like soaks your clothing. I just let out a really big sigh before sitting up. Oh, right. uh, as you sit up, he pours the last of it on top of your head. Oh, marvelous. You're awake. Uh, right. What's going on then? You know, when I said that you had to meet people at the Golden Sturgeon, I'd assumed that you would have done them the courtesy of at least being in a presentable state? Well, I'm not false advertising. I'm here. That's what I was asked to be. No one told me to put on some fancy clothes or all like that. Mm. 
shall arrange for you to have a doublet the next time you are to meet a potential employee. That's all you get. <laughs> the, the, the most unenthusiastic smile you've seen in your life. You see Erst's form kind of deflate for a moment and then re-inflate as he turns to you, Isabel. As our mutual acquaintance has stirred from his slumber, I suppose it's time that... Well, actually... He turns to you, Talon. Why don't you tell us what we're meant to do next? Am I supposed to know what we're doing next? You're supposed to know. <laughs> the question is, do you? I, find out? <laughs> I need you to roll a... Let's go with... Uh, huh. Yeah, just a general intelligence check. Just a D10 in your intelligence. It's not that bad. Is there such thing as a hangover check? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. That might be physique. Right, or I'm endurance. Not, Who knows? I'm not sure if this is a 9 or a 6, because it's not telling me which way around. Actually, no, it's on the odd number side of the dice, so I'm assuming that's a 9. So that would be a 19. Is that how that works? Well, it mm -hmm. is on this one. Because yeah, um, everything on this side is an odd number, and then everything on this side is even. So oh. I don't More. know if that's true for all of them, but but still, I mean, yeah. it's yeah. So that would be a nineteen. All right. With a nineteen, you do recognize what you have to do. Galen Dalberg, your employer, asked uh, Erst to arrange for a meeting with uh, a few individuals of. Uh, of course, not unsavory. Gallen is not one to deal in criminality and all that. But of a uh, questionable nature. Um, he had been looking for someone to uh, augment your skill set. Of course, not to replace you. You're irreplaceable. A witcher services are always needed. But perhaps there are Areas of expertise that lie outside of the monster slaying variety. Mm. Just got straight over my head. Yeah. Mm. And indeed, you remember Erst kind of muttering something about a. Well, with a night, even with a 19 in history and given your drunkenness, you don't remember exactly what he said, but he's a bit of a punce, so you figured it was something either like biting or sarcastic. But as, <laughs> as this interrogation continues, Erst kind of looks to you, trying to lead you into an answer. Gallen wants a few people to, I don't know, my skills alone aren't always the best skill set. So he wants a, a few more people. I don't really know. He's eccentric. He, he has a few ideas every so often. You see <laughs> Eris kind of fume at your... <laughs> Excuse me, at your um, sort of laissez faire <laughs> description of what's occurring. And so it turns to Isabel, the sort of bastion of, of at least decorum, <laughs> and says, Fine. He wants to offer you employment of a sort, the specifics of which can be better explained by him. Better explained by you. No, no, he kind of stumbles over a few of his words and becomes exasperated with the situation far too quickly before just barreling out the door as quickly as he can, the limp still kind of clinging to him. Well, that's certainly given me a lot of faith in this organization. <laughs> Everyone's good at the job. Mine isn't talking. 
Apparently not. Hmm. I assume you're a witcher then? You would assume correct. Isabel. Uh, for my hand. Talon. No, no. Take it and shake it. Uh, Eris throws open the door and kind of wordlessly like beckons the both of you to follow. That's our cue. Aye, off to work. Yep, I will yeah. follow it. Yep. All right. Exiting out of the sturgeon onto the cold streets of Novigrad. New companions are yet to be introduced. Employment opportunities are yet to be described. And the day has scarcely begun. With that, we'll go ahead and take a little bit of a break so that everyone can relax, enjoy, as we enter into the next hour. Mm -hmm. Adios, everyone.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> All right. So, as we left off, walking along the streets of Novigrad, Erst is... You get the sense that he's a constant professional. He doesn't suffer fools very easily or otherwise kind of relax, especially within his gait. There's a bit of a, a, well, both of you make a human perception check as you walk along. Ow. You okay? Loud. Yeah, I'm just fine. Where is human perception located? Oh, empathy. Oh, Ooh, that's, that adds nothing. Uh, <laughs> 23. I add a two. So 11. Tw 23 and 11. Hmm? That's a good run for me. That's that's the rolls there, huh? All right. Well, walking along, there's... Uh, there's not much that you notice, Talon. It's just sort of his walk. He kind of walks like that. Yeah. <laughs> and given his recent injury, I guess that you could surmise that it's kind of pestering him a little more than he'd like. Yeah, but who cares? Erst is always a stick in the mud anyway. Isabel, you're a little bit more nuanced in your uh, perspective concerning Erst. You get the sense of a man who is um, uh, military, of someone who is precise, someone who is uh, observant to the point where actually as you are walking along, he is taking passing glances at the both of you and though you can't explicitly tell the intent, at a moment your eyes do meet with his and he doesn't avert them. He's not scared or otherwise intimidated that you know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's just knowledgeable of it. I imagine we have that meeting of like, I know what you're doing. I know what yeah. you're doing. Mm -hmm. The, the Spider-Man pointing. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that that sort of mutual recognition of, mm -hmm. you know, of real recognizing real. Like for a moment you get that, pr not, not practice paranoia because that's actually a literal skill within this game <laughs> system, but that, that sense of suspicion. Mm. That uh, that sort of is inherent, especially these days. Um, and let's see, this we'd probably go to. Uh, yeah, probably go to this one at this point. Continuing along, uh, Erst doesn't really attempt to make conversation, so is there anything that you'd want to ask or anything that you'd like to say to each other as you sort of follow him diligently, going sort of in a south uh, easterly direction? Uh, yeah, I'll actually uh, speak to Talon. So, so have you met this employer before? Mm-hmm. And He's my employer. And what does he have you do? I mean, I'm a witcher. So usually when things get a bit dangerous, you don't want to send anyone else in because loss of life means loss of revenue. So it's more cost effective to send me. Oh, uh, a philanthropist then. He's got good business sense. I just help him out when he needs me. Mm. <clears throat> and in terms of things getting dangerous, are we talking thugs in alleys or are we talking monsters in the countryside? Depends on the day. And I point to the scar on my face. Uh, again, which I should have guessed. Mm-hmm. I'm just intensely curious about what he would want 
all of us for? Me, you, this other person? No offense, I'm not entirely sure what it is you do. <laughs> so what do you do? Oh, you'll see at some point. It's, um... Not necessarily the most intelligent thing to broadcast what I do in the street. You've been to Hyrax Square, I assume. You've seen that area. Hmm. He at least bloody knows it's a, it exists, says Erst as he. I just had that moment of like, I'm going to have to put literally put two and two together for this. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not exactly tolerated by certain religious folks in the area. Fair enough. They're not exactly the most tolerable either. No. And it's not for any point on my ears either, if I'm making myself clear to you now at this point. Fair enough. Even uh I can figure out the subtleties of this conversation. Usually it's lost on me, but... <laughs> Erist kind of scoffs at, at this comment, and then a sharp whistle emanates from him as you see a line of storefronts and in at the end of it, a uh, blacksmith um, and his workstation sort of sits. Uh, he's hammering away, and Erist kind of limps over to him and, and turns to you to only be but a moment. leaving you two standing right across from the entrance to a bridge that goes over the Pontar. If there's anything for me to lean against, I won't, you know, waste my time just staying stood up. There, there's, <laughs> there is unfortunately nothing. The only thing that's close is sort of like a partition in the wall behind you, but like it's it's like 15 feet away, so you'd have to actually move to lean against it. Like if you want to, you can, but I mean, yeah, it's not worth it, it. Yeah, I mean, he's not lazy. It's just not worth it. Yeah. No, I not mean, lazy. No. no. Not not lazy. Simply efficient. That's mm -hmm. that's the term. The business is uh, quickly concluded as you see Erst kind of uh, hoist a dagger from his uh, from his person and present it to the blacksmith. They break her for but a moment before hands are uh, sh shook, shake, shaked, shook. Yes, shook. Before the exchange is completed and the the uh, dagger is sharpened judiciously. Erst retrieves it after a few moments sharpening and throws a few crowns his way um, before returning to you. Apologies. I have to be a little more careful considering recent actions. And he looks to uh, Talon specifically. What recent actions? Oh, uh, Please tell me, please let me literally be merciful and tell me you remember. I've been around for a while. You'll have to narrow it down. <laughs> thing is, he's not trying to be funny. I, I know, I know. <laughs> That's the thing that frustrates Erst even more. Like, <laughs> the weird thing, I feel like it's coming across funnier than it should be. <laughs> I but know, it's but it's like you deadpan, you're just sort of like, I've been around for a long time. Don't know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> don't, don't know what you're referencing, fam. <laughs> so as Let's soon take as- take out the list. Point yeah, it. yeah. I have reason to believe that you might have kicked a bit of a hornet's nest last night. I just went for a walk. Hmm. Uh, perhaps kicking is putting too fine a point on it. We know the social graces kind of evade you. Uh, shall we say that you stuck your cock in it? And that they stung quite a lot. 
You're on about a bunch of people beating up on one guy. I didn't really know the situation. It just didn't seem fair. So I gave the guy a head start. That's your problem. In more ways than bloody one. Eris kind of, again, sighs before just waving it off and limping across the sort of ice-covered bridge between the northern part of Novigrad and the southern. Talon, you know the way well. He's leading you to the docks. It's where Galen's business uh, is conducted and is sort of uh, most centralized. Shipping has never really been a forte of yours. You're not really concerned with the economics of uh, the now, considering that you live for so long. But dwarves have their minds seized by coin sometimes. At least that's the stereotype. Gallon fits it almost to a T. As you walk along, you you receive a few hoops and hollers from the, uh, shall we say, uh, ladies of the evening from crippled Kate, who sort of hoop and holler out the window and wave to you, to both of you, rather coquettishly. Friends of yours? Not really. More friends than mine, Erst says, as he sort of <laughs> nods to each of them. Yeah, I don't really make friends all that easily. But you're such small talk. a charming gentleman. I mean, called many things. Reckon that was sarcasm. Very astute, Master Witcher. The whole this thing, the blankest of faces, <laughs> the stoniest of faces. Of expressions. No, no smiles here. No, no frivolity and joy. <laughs> in it's any no regret. No one's allowed to be happy in no regret. Yeah. <laughs> A gaggle of um, Redanians kind of crosses your path and and marches ever forward. Uh, in similar fashion, Erst also kind of shies away from their presence, sort of looking out to the harbor. They pass no... <laughs> excuse me. No uh, specific animosity engendered. And Erst kind of continues on. I like how we can attempt to like be like, whoop, we made ourselves look like the shadiest because in that street. <laughs> well, Arist kind of looked out to the harbor as though something had caught his attention. Y you unfortunately did do the whole cloak, b b face behind the cloak kind of, do not pay attention to the one behind the mirror. <laughs> I'm just walking. Yeah. and As far as they knew, I was just some sort of, you know... Novigradian woman trying to get something fun in the dodgy part of town. I'd much prefer them thinking that than I was a sorceress. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, sorceresses in Novigrad don't really mix. No. But eh, it's the best way. It's it's simultaneously the worst place to be and the best ticket out of the north. It's kind of kind of crap. But it's the gamut that you had to run, and you have now found yourself here. Lucky you. <laughs> Eris kind of looks to you. And his face kind of sours as he... <laughs> takes a deep breath, judiciously paces himself, and as you see him, he kind of seems to be trying to use the walking stick less and less. You get the sense that he absolutely abhors the fact that he has to use this thing, but uses it, none, you know, mm -hmm. uses it despite his baser impulses, leading you across various warehouses, various, um, excuse me, uh, places, and into the docks proper. 
here you see, of course, the full splendor of the free city of Novigrad laid pretty bare. Um, crates and crates of goods go onto boats, off of boats, uh, ships set sail and depart in laden with coin or laden with goods. Uh, you smell spices from distant lands. You hear uh, certain foremasters or foremen, that's the word, uh, foremen kind of bickering over the price of various furs and uh, indeed one of the more uh, hefty uh, packages that sort of uh, worms its way across your um, path seems to be a, uh, well, both of you make an awareness check. Or no, deduction, deduction. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a 24. 24? 10 on the dice. Um, All right. That's going to be a 15 for me. All right. So, as both of you sort of look at this, it's not that either of you are unfamiliar with the people of Skellige, but seeing the sort of physicality in motion and the differences between the men of the north and proper Skellige lads is readily apparent, especially as you see uh, two of them hoisting a rather large and heavy laden um, crate of what seems to, at least to you, um, Talon, smell like whale oil or rendered whale fat and, and other sorts of goods. They're sort of cursing at each other and, and kind of walking along. Um, one of them specifically seems to be kind of shaky. Uh, taking a good look at him, both of you can kind of recognize that his mind is elsewhere or that his, uh, his gait is uh, affected rather negatively. Indeed, Talon specifically, you know that um, unless somebody intervenes, this guy is going to drop his portion of the box. And how far away from us are they? About 15 feet. I'll or head over and just give a hand. 15 feet is like, what, four meters or something like that? Oh yeah, this know. is in meters, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I, I I now have to be the one to express in in, in your, your strange, Here's your strange though. words. In We're weird. Yes, you're weird. We use both. In Britain, we use both. If you stop someone on the street, they're more likely to say feet than me is. Look. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Look, we Officially, can talk about how wonderful the customary system is later. <laughs> but for now, um, you're, you're, what's your speed again, actually? Um, my speed is somewhere on uh, my sheet. Uh, six. Six. Okay, so yeah. Even at a walking pace, you can easily sort of speed up and, and support. Uh, I'd like you to make a physique check. Uh, okay. Uh, physique. Uh, it's going to be uh, 14. All right. So, um, wait. Physique? With body included? Mm-hmm. All my stuff went into endurance instead of physique. Ah, I see. Right. Well, oh well. So as you sort of uh, boost on the other side of uh, this more wobbly uh, gentleman, um, he kind of looks to you wild-eyed and, and kind of uh, lets out an involuntary yelp, like, ah, 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 his foreman uh, or crewmate this sort of waves him off. All right, Mungan, let's, 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 let's calm down, all right? Just, just, uh, stranger, he sort of calls out to you. Do, do you mind taking his place? I do, actually. I was just helping him because he was going to drop it. 
<laughs> right, 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 fine. Just, just, just. Talon, gotta, gotta... please oh. help the men. Uh, I'll help. All right. Uh, all right, it's just about... Uh, right over there on the docks, and he points to a, a stack of crates that has been sort of judiciously assembled. Uh, with a 14 physique, it strains a little bit more than you would have wished. Uh, I but, slept funny, that's all. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. You you slept on a bar, uh, mm. drunkenly. Mm. It's just waking up those same sensations. So, uh, as you help and assist Mungan in, in settling his side of the crate, he kind of steps away from it and, and sort of grabs his arms, kind of rocking back and forth before the foreman kind of lays a hand on his shoulder. Uh, all, all right, all right. That's, that's fine, lad. That's fine. You're good. I, I... And, and Mungan kind of nods and <sighs> mutters something under his breath. You can't quite understand what, but uh, looking at the two of them, it's kind of clear that there's some other thing going on. Um, that lies kind of outside the spoken. As, <clears throat> excuse me, as the foreman looks to you, you kind of get a better sense of him. His lips are kind of uh, pulled towards his ears. His, uh, they're rather thin. His nose is quite straight and uh, narrow, especially in relation to his head, which is rather, uh, wide and bald, actually. But as you sort of um, drop the crate and uh, he looks at you, he sort of pats you on the back rather roughly. <laughs> Never thought I'd need a witcher's help so soon, eh? <laughs> hmm. It's a lot of whale oil we've got. Eh, hey, well. Have to do something in winter. Mm. Keep you from going create. Uh, he sort of stops himself as he looks to Mungan, who kind of stares at him. Uh, uh, lads, he calls to the other two that were um, assisting. Uh, get him back to to Broders. I, I the two of them kind of drug to each other and kind of lead Mungan back onto the ship uh, that awaits down at the docks. You assume at least. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, Dara, and he hold, holds out his hand. Dara and Hindar, quartermaster of Broder's Disgrace. I'll uh, shake his hand. <laughs> so, uh, uh, apologies for interrupting. And he, he looks past you to Isabel and Erst. Erst is almost as if he's trying to place uh, where he knows this person. He's kind of silent, but he kind of nods. It's no problem. No problem. I smile sweetly and nod. <laughs> Still looking as you do from the morning, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's kind of like uh, <laughs> taken aback for a moment, but he kind of uh, becomes a little bit more relaxed, you know, kind of <laughs> leaning against the whale oil. I, I, I just been here for a little while, and uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I figured you might be interested. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Master Witcher, if, if there's nothing else, of course. You know, you best give your men a break every once in a while. Didn't oh, seem like he was very sure-footed. Mungin? Mm. Uh -oh. Uh, this sickness is something that clings to him. Uh, he'll get over it in time. I'll walk up What's and the like, um, yes, what, what what has befallen your man? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> no, nothing that need that need concern anyone at, at this point. It's probably just the cold. Winter does strange things to seamen. Was 
Well, uh, that's Again, one. everything that we say in this campaign is much more serious than we make it seem. I should mm. stress this. <laughs> yeah, we're just terrible people. Yeah, <laughs> we're absolute children. Um, uh, you uh, if you don't... Be careful. Uh, if it isn't a cold, it might ravage your entire crew. Uh, that's fair, but uh, I'm sure that... Uh, excuse me. Uh, sure that Seamus wouldn't mind. Him and Mungan are thick as thieves, and too. Right. Hmm. Well, will take care of him, don't worry. Well, as much as he can. Right, but, well. um... He sort of stills himself and kind of looks to you. Make a persuasion check. Are you sure you want to ask me to do that? Yes, sure. I do. Uh, persuasion is under empathy. Oh. Okay, that's... Oh no, I'm asking Isabel to check her empathy. 20. Okay. Um, if you're inclined to healing and the like, uh, which... <laughs> of course, you're, you're welcome to. I'm sure that uh, Captain Kilderan would more than accommodate any... Uh, services that you might uh, provide and me being the quartermaster I can only distribute the funds he has to give the order well, unfortunately my talents lie very much elsewhere oh hey uh, then uh, what help could you offer oh none really I was just uh, intrigued now make a deceit check <laughs> Are you sure you want to ask me to do that? Yeah, yeah. Gotta give it a shot. Okay. That's a 22. <laughs> As you kind of say this, he kind of looks to you and nods. <laughs> Continenters, curious as ever. <laughs> Well, if your curiosity need be stoked any further, you'll see myself, and Captain, and Mungan down at the Brothers' Disgrace. It's that one with the black sails over there. And he sort of motions to it. Looks a fine ship. Ah, Erst at that point kind of a uh, uh, wash of recognition washes up, comes over him. Ah. This is a shipment of whale oil that was ordered by by Galen Dalberg. Huh. Uh, Dara looks past you. The same. Are you uh, Erst? I believe it was. Yes, yes. We'll talk later. Uh, negotiate the price and whatnot. Negotiate. Erst kind of continues the walk and and. He beckons you to do the same as Dara sort of sort of looks to him. Negotiate. Thought the price were agreed upon. I'll start um, following away before I go and says, guess I'll be seeing you later and then walk off. It's, 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 it's weird, a man. I, I, <sighs> and then I walk away. <laughs> you hear a growl like you're used to sort of the low growl of Continenters, kind of like who are exasperated. You hear actual like anger rise from Dara before being quickly subdued and marching into the direction of the ship. Yo, yeah, we should probably not piss off Skellicus because some of them just turn into bears. Like that's out of character. <laughs> just we shouldn't do that. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, Jamie. No, that's not a challenge. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, I reckon I could take a bear. Bacon. You, you know bears in the Witcher universe are like very <laughs> really, bad. Yeah, yeah. Like really bad. Like I cannot stress Some to you boys. how bad they are. <laughs> Jokes were made. Jokes Indeed. Were made. So continuing on. Mm -hmm. 
past this sort of processing station, uh, there lies not exactly a residence, but a sort of a, a small building by which Talon, you know, uh, Gallen has his operations centralized. It's not at the crest of the Isle of, or of the island that Novigrad is settled on, but it's near there. So, as you sort of enter in, the room itself is lit rather uh, comfortably, and looking around at the various uh, furnishings that adorn this space, you get a sense of comfort, not of opulence, but definitely of a uh, the impression that whoever occupies this space prefers to be of a rather splendiferous position. Standing over a table on a small stool that had been prepared for him by one of his assistants, a, uh, excuse me, a slight-ish uh, dwarven compatriot of his, you see Galen Dahlberg. His hair is a strawberry blonde. Even within the beard, it doesn't waver much past that darker shades of auburn. Um, his eyes are very deep set, almost as if they are uh, little onyxes that are set within his face. And his nose, though sort of bulbous, is chapped a little bit from the cold. Uh, his hair extends in a similar wild fashion as his beard, though not very full. It is very self-contained. It almost looks like a lion's mane uh, in texture and sort of uh, length. But as you enter in, Galen kind of looks up and, and smiles, uh, his eyes seeming to smile with him. Right? Not right then. <laughs> it's good to see you again. <clears throat> he steps off from the stool and goes over to Talon, holding out his hand <laughs> rather uh, in a rather friendly manner. I'll take it in a oh, similar yeah. fashion. Uh, he, he pulls you down to his and, uh, height and sort of pats your back very viciously is sort of the word that pops into mind. Um, Isabel, I as retaliate you... retaliate in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that you were going on a bender. Would I joined you? Next time. <laughs> I hope so. Not much of a bender sure. anyway. It was, just, it was just a walk, really. A walk? Aye. Not according to Erst, at least. And he sort of points to Erst, who has, at this point, allowed Isabel to enter the space and close the door behind her. Mm -hmm. mm. The fact that pissing off one of the big four excites you is a bloody disgrace. As he says this, both of you, roll streetwise checks for me. <laughs> Nice streetwise located. By the way, I feel like it should be noted that Isabel isn't saying anything. She's waiting for her introduction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course. Just so you know. Oh, this is going to be bad. That's 12. That's a 17. Okay. Um, going to say that because you're new in town and you're keeping a low profile. Isabel, the big four. No bells. No nothing. Just... It's, it's something that Erst just said. That's all you know. Just words. Talon, the big four. Ah, yes. The big four. The crime lords that basically control the Novigradian underworld. Huh. Hmm. 
Gallon kind of <laughs> kind of waves it off. I'll be fine. The king and I can work something out. Probably. Maybe. And if not, eh, just have to uproot. Go elsewhere. Said Novigrad shit in winter. Mm. At that, you do, with the 17, recognize the big four as being who they are. The individual known as Horson Jr., a dwarf by the name of Cleaver, a individual who is rather private by the name of Reuven or something like that. It's, it's impossible to remember. At least with what little drunkenness you do uh, retain. And indeed, the king. The king of beggars. Nobody really knows him or his intents, but he seems to be a little less craven than the others. So, eh, you figure that Galen of all people should be able to reach a deal. Mm -hmm. I don't know these people, but I know that one of these people needs to button their damn sleeves. Oh yeah, two years later and I am still, still. Psychically, psychically, <laughs> Isabel, you feel mm. crimes against fashion being committed. And it displeases you greatly, but you're not sure why. As, <laughs> as Galen sort of waves off this worry, he takes a proper look at Isabel. Uh, we'll say that your radiance has sort of gone from uh, breathtaking to merely stunning at this point. <laughs> uh, oh, damn. <laughs> It's it's been an it's been an hour or two. Like you've walked around, you're kind of cold. It's it's not as impressive, but still, Galen kind of um, similarly kind of regards you and says, huh? <laughs> I, "And who do I have the the pleasure of uh, meeting here?" Hopefully, he, you would know as you summoned me. I uh, I only put out a. a Call for employment, and even then, when that turned up nothing, I turned to you. So, Erst, have you brought me? Erst kind of in implores you to introduce yourself. Kind of do that whole looking at I'm for the side of my eye. I'll just say, Lady Isabel Juliette Marie de Leoncourt. Ah, what a fancy names! Marvelous. Uh, and I might understand that you are gifted in ways that are, uh, uh, shall we say, outside the normal. Yes. Marvelous, marvelous. Well, you found a friend in myself. Although, uh, I do hope you don't elaborate further. I wouldn't want to uh, charge the eternal fire. Uh, perhaps asking me too many questions, eh? Of course not. Eh... Marvelous. Though, as I understand it, his um, demeanor kind of sours. There's supposed to be uh, two that you brought me, eh? And he looks to you, Talon, as well. One showed up. Hey. And Eos, I am to assume that you dispatched Sojin to collect? Eos kind of nods. He, as you know, he's quite uh, a singular individual when it comes to his intelligence. Ah, as thick as pig shit. Eos hmm. kind of... <laughs> says nothing at that. But Gallen kind of nods and says, all right, all right. Well, they'll probably come along soon soon enough anyway. So, I must... Isabel did... did... Uh, Just Isabel, perhaps. Isabel, marvelous. 
I'm sure you're aware of that uh, winter in business. <laughs> he, he, at this point, goes back to the table that he was uh, sort of standing at, motioning for you all to follow. Mm -hmm. Will do. Winter and business don't exactly mix that well, and uh, I have certain clients that struggle with particular things. That's why I brought him along. But in the fact that I sort of tolerate him, <laughs> he sort of pushes an elbow into your hip, um, Talon, because it can't reach your ribs, but, you know, still sort of a hearty kind of camaraderie thing. Talon certainly helps, and I appreciate his services, but they are limited in scope. If I need something killed, I go to him. If I need something investigated, I go to him. But as you can surely surmise, being one of such a finery, there's more to life than just killing and investigating. Quite, yes. Ergo, I've needed someone of your and hopefully this uh, third individual's particular skills. I'm not sure if you're well versed in healing or the like, but even if you're not, I find that having talented friends is a surefire way to ascertain a wider scope of things. Do you get my meaning, eh? I do. I certainly do. However, one thing I should put to bed, I am no healer. Ah. Uh. Don't take my appearance and gentle demeanor for that of a nurturing type. And I'll, like, just make flame appear at my fingertips, like, very briefly. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Mm. Gallon kind of averts his gaze from that. <laughs> oh, these candles, they are just so, so tricky to very, handle. Very strong candles in here, yes. Aye, aye. Well, even if you won't, I'd assume that you, uh, at least, would be able to uh, diffuse difficult situations in a little more uh, genteel way. Oh, absolutely, yes. Marvellous. Because I'll be needing that skill as well. Galen kind of breathes at this point. Right. Well. How would you like to be brought aboard, eh? I have some questions first before I agree to anything. Well, not that I have much choice, as per your man's letter. If I don't comply, then I will find myself on the pies. Which, by the way, just if, if I am to become on board as a sort of advisor in, in the social aspects, perhaps tell your staff when they're approaching others for employment that threatening to see them at the stake is not how you get someone on board. It doesn't engender positive feelings. <laughs> Gallon kind of waves his off as he sort of reaches behind the desk to reach what seems to be a strong vial of spirits, setting it on the desk and uncorking it. <laughs> That's Erst for you. He's a little bit of an arsehole, but he gets the job done. I understand, of course, that he clings to a bit of his theatrics, given his uh, previous station, and he shoots a glare at Eris to kind of matches it. But, rest assured, under my employ, you'll be taken care of. Hmm. That's partly what I'm worried about. Uh, I'm to assume... Eh? By the clandestine nature of this employment offerment, that what you do is not exactly above board. Yeah. As he drinks from the the bottle, he kind of 
a little bit get ca- gets caught in his throat. He pounds his chest and uh, cracks his neck. I pat him on the back. <laughs> I'm not a babe, you sh- <laughs> bloody. <laughs> Ilfgaardian layman and I didn't agree anyway. And he sort of puts it back behind the desk. I wouldn't say that what I do is within the realms of legality, but I wouldn't say that it is outside of it. And I resent strictly any notion that perhaps I am not a law-abiding citizen. I, of course, would never, ever say that. Perhaps maybe that we find the law not as malleable as and when the situation requires it to be. Aye, aye, and as my first tongue is dwarven, you know, coming from Mahakam and Mount Carbon, and uh, the laws are different there. There are, uh, well, certain leniencies that the North just hasn't caught up on yet. I'm sure it will in time, but Story for another day, eh? (laughs) My second question actually pertains to the nature of the work we shall be doing. Now, I am to understand that this will be as and when the jobs appear, and they will not all be similar in nature. But I refuse to be part of any sort of protection racket or anything as low as that. (sighs) That you would assume that of me? (laughs) Talon, what impression have you given this this fine woman, eh? I just give him a really stony look back. I kind of just like vaguely of... like gesture at just that face he's pulling, like. <laughs> it's like you wanted a good impression, and I was sent. Why? <laughs> is, is essentially the look. That's uh, bloody useless, this man. At least in some things. Put it this way: the the men that you've sent. Certainly uh, give that vibe. Oh, do not worry. We are dealing in shipping and, and transport more often than not. Everything about board, I promise you. Uh, at least to a certain extent. Uh, <laughs> I am not some common thug. You must understand that. Uh, as you can see from this lovely place I enjoy a bit of finery Mm. as you most likely given that stunning face are accustomed to eh? I give him that sort of really snooty hmm, that like someone from old money would give to someone from new money that thinks they're on the same level you know like she's just like hmm Gallen kind of takes that on the chin. You get the sense that, yeah, he's gotten that a lot. <laughs> Neither does Isabel, but she still pretends, you know, that she yeah. has what she used to. <laughs> if it's any consolation, he's a careful businessman. So it's risk versus reward. He makes sure that he's looked after. He doesn't dip too far below the board. A glowing assessment from you. My sweet Melitola. (laughs) My sweet Melitola. He hands you the North Guardian lemon at that point. Not to say that's what I was after, but... But! All right, well, you have my interest. Good. I hope to maintain your attention. Because there's a lot. And he sort of motions to the desk, taking his perch uh, upon the stool. And you see scattered about uh, a map of Velen, various contracts and uh, sort of not cries for help so much as just uh, requests for aid. (laughs) To... Two ways of phrasing a similar thing. Yeah. <laughs> These are the contracts. They are usually 
pretty simple. And no deliveries that go quite outside of Villain. The winter wars have been ravaging the countryside for long enough. I've learned that going farther than Tameria is a mistake. So, uh, people need things. Way loyal to few lanterns and, well, wax for candles, cloth for heavier clothing and the like. I make sure that it gets them. And there are some hiccups along the way. Hiccups that, hopefully, you and your co-worker now, and turns to Talon, and your co-workers to come will be able to solve quite swiftly. All right, um, what sort of hiccups would someone with social graces and perhaps other abilities require that a man with two swords, cat eyes, and many potions not? I was not that I don't trust Talon and, and whatnot, but, well, uh, how do I put it nicely? His shit with social graces. Is not wrong. I, if you, I'm just. If you are just merely transporting simple goods such as whale oil and cloth to peasants, then well, you don't particularly need social graces. Hey, but well, the other stuff can come in handy. Not that Talon's not uh, good at what he does. It's always nice to have a friend or two by your side. I found. Hmm. Or at least someone you can tolerate. And he turns to Erst, who at this point has sort of attended to a ledger and has been scribbling down a few things. All right, fair enough. Look, I understand, given the particular climate at Novigrad. Caution is the go-to. But I need you to... abandon a bit of those fears. You, being uh, skilled in these things, makes you little more powerful than perhaps you give yourself credit for. Perhaps it would be best if you exercise that power. Or would you rather be cooped up in the nowhere? Hmm. Hiding out in the bits? Isabel bites her tongue as if she was going to say something like really just biting back at him. I don't know. I know. You're a compatriot. As Erst is in tone to me. Is quite skilled at the blade and other things. But uh, might I be so bold as to suggest that having a Toussaint Trois boy riding around is sure to cause suspicion and resentment towards whoever's, whoever he is riding for. At this point, Isabel's face just goes hard. Yeah. He is left out of this. Aye, aye, aye. I wouldn't want him in this. <laughs> is there a reason I asked for you? Good. But you are right. I need to do something besides be cooped up in that place. So yes, I will ride in your caravans with Talon and whoever it is that shows up eventually. I will provide my services. But I'm warning you, if anything happens to him, your whole world will come burning down. Uh, 
Make an intimidation check. Uh oh. Wait, I think I have something I could add to this. Mm. Where is intimidation? Uh, it's in will. In will. Oh. Okay. That is a. Oh, is that nice? <laughs> it means good things are about to happen, I think. That is a 18. All right. As you sort of intone this, the business sort of business like. See, that's how scary she is. She made the DM not speak. The businessman like uh, qualities of Galen kind of droop a little bit and bounce right back. Uh, wouldn't dream of it. Uh, here I was thinking I'd offer you half rent for the nowhere. I can cover that comfortably. <clears throat> he sort of clears his throat and, and kind of motions to <laughs> Talon to give him the Nilfgaardian lemon. Uh, Isabella now has a That's very gone. just gentle, sweet smile upon her face. <clears throat> he necks a few uh, good gulps of it and <clears throat> looks to you, Isabel. Right, all right. Well, I'll tell you this fortunate thing. Fortune of fortunes, honestly. There were a contract that came this morning that might be... that just might be a good trial run. Hmm. Uh, shall we say the, the second part of the interview? Get a feel for the work. Mm. At this... He offers you the bottle of Nilfgaardian lemon. <laughs> mind you, <laughs> mind you, it is akin to vodka, so it's this is strong spirit. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Um, Isabel just will gently like raise up a hand. Um, no, thank you. You sure about that? Um, yes. At at that. I need to check something because this game. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, searching, searching, searching. Ah. Page 32. Okay. So let's see here. Uh oh. All right. Oh, okay. you have to poison for not drinking it. Ooh. No, no, no. I just read up on the rules. No worries. As you partook of the wine this morning, your uh, taste is sated for now, and so you refuse it quite comfortably. Two gallons, sort of. It's not I alcoholic anymore. That's fair. That's fair. No anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. That's fair. <laughs> Gallon kind of shrinks away and raises the bottle to you before throwing it to <laughs> to Talon. Uh, Talon, go ahead and make a uh, hmm, what would be a catching sort of skill? Uh, uh, would it be under reflex, maybe? Uh, sleight of hand? Sleight of hand, I guess? This is a new system with new skills. Where's sleight of hand? Okay. That's dexterity. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, I don't have anything in that. Well, it's a nine there. So then plus five. Uh, so 14. All right. You almost drop it, but catch it with both your hands and, and <laughs> Gallon kind of laughs. Right then. Claps his hands together. Rubs them a little bit. Let's get started. At that moment, a hard knock comes onto the door. With that, let's go ahead and call it a day. Come on, man. Well, who do you think it is? Like, who who could it possibly be, I wonder? 
I am three. So has the game. <laughs> Player three. Player A new three. challenger approaches. <laughs> Phelanus wants to smash. <laughs> Winter does strange things to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the title of? No, let's not. No, I, I, I don't think YouTube would would appreciate <laughs> no. having that. Um. That I'm clipping that though. That's getting sent in to our PGN. Uh, no, it does. It doesn't have to be. Oh, it does. <laughs> I mean, does. I like that. I, I will say, I like that there was a dead silence for like a solid couple seconds. <laughs> Nothing I feel like we were, we were either processing it or trying to think of, you know, a grown-up way to move the conversation on, and no one could come Nobody, up. no, it, I cracked. I think I was the first to crack. You were. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what did it? It was the little... Remember it? That you did in the corner there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's... <laughs> um, I'll do the outro, shall I? Yeah, you know, not ahead. the GM. Not the Game Master. <laughs> It's your show. Run it's it. It's not my show. It's your show. Anyway, it's our show. <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, it's... for the first episode of Grains of Truth, which is our Witcher tabletop RPG game. And if you've just tuned in or you came in halfway through, this will be going up on YouTube real soon. Uh, I will get us up uh, and the session zero will be up uh, for you to watch on our YouTube. I'll pop it in here. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so hop over there. We have VODs of uh, the other two RPG games that are on this channel too, uh, both D&D 5e. This is a completely new system, so we're brand new to it. But hop on over there. Uh, this VOD will go up real soon within the next day or so. Uh, and then uh, I think that's probably it from us tonight. Yeah, yeah. Don't have anything else to plug. Go and subscribe to all the relevant channels that have been mentioned, not only at the top, but uh, here. Uh, Greyhawk channel for uh, Rise of the Paralands or... Uprising. Uprising in the Paralands. Um, encounter roleplay for the Order. Uh, and obviously, Susanna Grace's channel for Bite Club, Curion, uh, and soon to be Grains of Truth. I think our session zero, uh, where we explained the world state and also introduced the uh, third player that will be a regular, um, Phelanus, uh played by the lovely Alice. Uh, Alice Faye on Twitter, I think. Uh, something like that. Um, lovely character, lovely time. Uh, we will be sure to uh, get her on board soon as she's feeling better. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Mm. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, shameless plug over. Oh, the joke was there. See, it's a new show. I'm allowed to make the same joke twice. Right. And with that, we're going to leave. Bye, everybody. Bye. I ruined it.